I do believe that there has been an extraordinary renaissance in research about dogs lately. Um, what is driving this, I think, is a somewhat belated recognition of just how phenomenal and unlikely is the bond between these two completely different species. I'm always amazed that I cannot walk by my dog without recognizing um, how completely alert he is to everything I do. Uh, if he's sound asleep and I tiptoe past him, he's awake. He's aware of my tiptoed presence. He misses nothing. It's like this has been the dog's job for the past 100,000 years. The thing is, those of you who live with dogs know this. We get to experience this personally on a day-to-day -day or moment-to-moment -moment basis. It is not a bomb that comes up occasionally. Uh, it is something we see constantly. A book on dogs, on cultures throughout the world and their dogs, their faithful companions. Yeah, this is right up my alley. And something that I've been photographing ever since I started traveling internationally. Of course, there's a lot of stories involving the photos. A couple who come to mind. In the winter of 1984, I traveled to Mount Everest. And en route, we stopped and engaged the people in Lhasa, Tibet. And I can remember to this day seeing little roly-poly kids with little roly-poly Himalayan dogs in the doorway and grabbing a photograph here and there. One of the most remote uh, cultures that I was uh, planning on visiting were the Yanomamo that uh, reside on basically a large track of Amazon rainforest bordering um, Colombia, Venezuela, and Brazil. I started noticing the number of dogs in this remote village. The dogs of the Yanomamo were extraordinarily chilled. So I was uh, quite taken with these little hunting dogs. They were all work and no drama. And that's exactly the way I like encountering a dog in a remote village. On another occasion, I was traveling across the Andes and it was in Ecuador. Along the side of the road were two young boys and um, I first noticed the boys, then the puppies that they were holding. And though there was no common language, it was pretty obvious. I think the father had told them to take the puppies up to the edge of the road and give them away to any passerby. And just the expressions on their face told the true story. They wanted to keep the puppies and yet probably not, uh, not in the cards. And I think the last story I'd like to share is in the mountains of New Zealand. I uh, traveled up into the high meadows and uh, encountered a sheep herder with his dogs and a large flock of sheep, two or three dogs working a herd so efficiently, responding to the commands of the sheep herder, yelling out commands, and the dogs would instantly turn and drive the herd one way or the other. It was a memorable demonstration. I've found and photographed people with their dogs, their strange dogs, dogs I would never know what kind they were, but if it's an engaging photo, I've shot it. Dogs Make Us Human is a compendium of all those photos throughout the last 30 years. All of us are able to make interesting observations about dogs. I mean, it's extraordinary what one can see in our relationship to dogs if we only look. And one of the marvelous things about Art Wolf is that he looks for us. I love it. He's the one looking and taking these extraordinary pictures. Um, and I had the privilege of just adding words to them. So I'm very happy with the outcome and I hope you are too. Thank you.